Hi, and welcome to this flash stream demo video brought to you by Door Corporation. In this video, we will go through an introductory view of what Flystream is, how we get a solution, and what we might have to do to get that solution. So here I have the Piper PA24, and at this point, all I've done is import the CAD. So this CAD was deliberately created for Flystream in that I made some specific decisions on how to separate my surfaces, so that way it'd be easier to get a solution in Flystream. But for, for this video, we'll go ahead and assume that this CAD is very clean and it's good for Flystream. And the only way that we did that was we just imported CAD, right clicking CAD and then pressing import. Now we have that in here. So this is a default view here. We can also toggle on the meshing by using the toggle wireframe option right here. But for this introductory part right here, we will not need to actually see what the mesh looks like. So let's go ahead and start out. So first let's go ahead and use the select faces option. And I'm gonna go ahead and select these surfaces that correspond to the fuselage. Now after I select those and I have all of them selected, go ahead and press right click and then split into new body. Over here on the left hand side, we'll see that body two pops up underneath our sim tree. We can do the same thing for the wings now and the main wing. Right click, split to new body. Same thing for the horizontal tail. And subsequently the vertical tail. Now, if we turn this around, we'll see that we have a surface that was created here, maybe from the cat environment. So let's go ahead and delete this because we have, want a uh, perfectly XZ bisected model. We're doing the half model here in Flystream. So with that being said, we see that we might have some, some optical issues around here, maybe around this section here, and uh, at the main wing wing tip as well. So let's go ahead and toggle on that wireframe and see what's going on. As we go closer, we can start to see that we have uh, some small meshing issues. Now this really boils down to mesh density and the mesh edge size and how that is able to resolve the surface curvature. Because this is a wingtip, we have higher rates of curvature. So if we select that, we can right click and now we can choose retessellate trimmed mesher. Let's go ahead and decrease that. And we start to see that we're able to resolve more of the curvature. In that case, it wasn't quite enough. So we'll decrease it even more. And our wingtip is starting to form. And this is kind of a trial and error type of thing. You'll get a gauge for what the, uh, the edge sizes should be over time. But we've gotten a little bit more curvature there, so that's probably pretty good for our solution. Over here at the main wing wingtip, we gotta do the exact same thing. And we'll change this to, let's see, 0.45 to start out with. There we go. Now we can start to see that looks more like a wingtip, so I'm happy with that. At this point, something that's really important to note is that when you build your CAD model, when you have a trailing edge, um, you might have a surface that's back here. And that, that is fine. You can actually designate the upper and lower surface trailing edges for a wing section. And that's absolutely possible within Flightstream, and that's more than fine. Personally, I like to go with the finite trailing edge structure, and I'll go ahead and use the Select Faces option. I'll select that surface. I can also go up here to press Delete. And now I have an open trailing edge. So how do we close that? Well, first we go to this line selection tool, or the edge selection tool, select the lower and the upper. I right click and now this new option pops up. It says mark curve as pair as neighbors. Right clicking that we can see, oh, the now they've joined. And if I also right click again, so they merge all perimeters, then we have a closed trailing edge. So that created a small issue up here, but we'll fix that manually within geometry. Now, if you ever want to get rid of this or decrease the size relative to your view, always double click and then your reference frame will decrease in size. So with that being said, we've kind of fixed some of the wing tips. We've separated the bodies. Now let's go ahead and apply our weight conditions. So in Flystream, there are two predominant conditions that you can use for your, your wakes. Uh, one is to define the trailing edge or where the wake starts to propagate from and then the boundary for that wake propagation, called a wake termination node. Now with the edge selection enabled right now, we can select this and we see that it's highlighted in pink all the way, all the span of the horizontal tail. And we can right click and we see it can say trailing edges, apply. So now we have the trailing edge designation here. Now since the edge right here will not come in contact with another body, we do not need to put a wake termination node there. Especially we're gonna go ahead and mirror this so it would actually be a wake that's shed continuously off of the full span of horizontal tail when we go into the solver. 
Now I'll see the same thing for the main wing. We can see that we have selected this portion, but we also need this other portion. So we right click, trailing edge, apply. Now we see it's all highlighted in green, so that's good. In this case, we do have the trailing edge of the main wing coming in contact with the fuselage. So we're going to go ahead and select the vertices by clicking that, selecting, then right click, and I have a new option that pops up and it says wake termination notes. We also do apply. There is an auto detect option as well that you can go ahead and uh, use by right clicking the trailing edges and then you can sec select the surface. Um, my personal opinion is I like to do it manually and that's why I show that here. So with that being said, we don't need to designate the vertical tail because we're just looking at a solution using these wing surfaces and we're not incorporating beta or anything else like that. It is true that this surface will create drag, but for this first introductory video, we're not concerned with a detailed aerodynamic solution. With that selected, we might want to do one more thing before we export this from the CAD to the geometry. And that is, let's go ahead and rename these so that way we can look at the different forces for each of these surfaces. So we'll right click, click rename. Okay, with that being done, now we can click this, hold down the control or the shift button, select all these, convert to geometry. Now we'll see that we have those popped up over here. And additionally, now we have geometry over here. But even more importantly, we also can expand the trailing edges and wake termination nodes, and we see that everything that we did in the CAD environment now is carried over to geometry. Now the one thing that we do need to reset real quick is this reference position. So we created that in order to improve our view location for that specific tip location and we can also correct that by going to coordinate systems and reset the global origin and that will reset it back to what you define in your CAD environment. Now I'm actually going to go back here because we got a little bit of manual fixing to do. Very short. I'm going to convert that back to a origin from my view and we'll see that we have uh, some overlapping faces and some other issues. So I'm going to go ahead and use this face selection tool. I'm going to delete this bottom face right here press and delete selected faces. And then I'm gonna use the lasso tool. We have two different lassos, a poly edge, which is kind of an, uh, a free shape or a free lasso, and then a rectangular lasso. So I'm gonna collect the, so I see I have uh, those two, I have three selected right now. But I wanna join all those. I'm gonna use the uh, merge selected vertices by averaging option. And there we go, it's all closed up. So that is exactly what we want to accomplish there because we need closed services in flight stream. We cannot have any holes. So we can verify that fix by clicking update under topology and under this free edges, you can double click this and it highlights all the free edges. Now it just highlights the edge of the model as we have XZ bisected, which means that we close this up down here. Otherwise this would be highlighted in pink and we'd have a free edge there. Additionally, there's something called the degenerate or overlapping faces, which might've detected that small error. And we could have double clicked this option when that was there. But for this case, we fixed that. Now let's right click reference, reset the global origin. And within coordinate systems now, I'm actually gonna create a new coordinate system. And let's go ahead and make this the CG location. But in this case, I actually need to convert from meters to feet because my CG location was given to me in feet and it's just easier to do that. So I can edit this now and I'm gonna input this. pressing enter and then we click modify. So if we turn this model around, now we'll actually be able to see that reference frame. So there it is right there. And we can actually change the name of that as well. I'm gonna change that to center of gravity. And then we can see that the text actually updates. It's very faint with the purple background, but nonetheless, we have it there. Okay, before we run a solution, we really have one more thing to do. Now we have to change some of these solver settings. So these solver settings are going to dictate our solution parameters. They can be considered operating conditions as well. So there are net many options here and you can run unsteady simulations just as you can run steady. For this case, in this video, we're gonna go ahead and force the solver to run all iterations. I'm gonna set that to 400, for instance. And I'm actually gonna make this a steady solution. So I'm not gonna change it to unsteady or anything like that. Otherwise, I could have gone over here to solver, right clicked, and I could have change to unsteady, but we're gonna make it keep it steady state. My processor count, my parallel processor count, I'm actually gonna increase quite a bit. Flystream gives you this unique opportunity to really parallelize your solution, and it's done very easily. 
So I'm, I have a 28 core processor on this specific machine that I'm working on. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that to 24 for instance. Now I'm gonna change this free stream velocity to match what the wind tunnel operating condition was for my experimental data that I'm trying to match. I'm gonna change that to 93 feet per second. The reference length, I'm gonna make my mean geometric cord for the main wing. I'm gonna put that at approximately 5.75 feet. And then my reference length is going to be my area, my wetted area, my wing area right here. So I'm gonna change that to 88 feet squared. Now at this point, we have most everything done with the, uh, the geometry. We have everything done with the solver settings and we've gotten our weight conditions applied. So we should be able to go ahead and go to the solver initialization through this button right here. Clicking that, we get the first option here that we need to select use symmetry plane XZ because we have this XZ bisected model. This TREFS location marks the boundary, the farthest boundary for your wake to propagate to. So you can also click this default button and it calculates what would be a, a reasonable or average value for this model's geometry, this length scale. So you can always use that. Now these are the different geometry surfaces that we have and to select all of them, we can actually do it individually. However, we can also just select this top button here, select all of them. The poly mesher option here is something that I usually just leave on unless you run into certain really fringe errors with it. And that is going to convert your unstructured quads or unstructured faces in your mesh to structured quads. And that is a good tool to just leave enabled. Initializing here, we can see that now we're starting to uh, have our solution environment take shape. Okay, so now we have been transported to the solver window and we should be ready to press play and run the solver. So as we see this solver solution take place, we can see a number of things. The first of which is the vorticity. Vorticity is one of the default displays here within the solver window, and you can go ahead and change that if you wish. Flystream is a surface vorticity solver, so that's one of the reasons why we have this default vorticity value. And this vorticity actually lends itself to the solution. So what we try to look for in the solution as it progresses on iterations is whether or not the order of magnitude from the lower limit to the upper limit is in the same order of magnitude. And also we try to usually have this, uh, this wake, uh, the wake color if we have this prescribed wake or propagating wake from our lifting bodies as uh, more green or kind of in the middle of these ranges. But we can change the solution display here. We have a number of things. By clicking right click in the solver window, we now have these available to us. In this case, we could choose velocity, we could choose boundary Mach number. Uh, another common one is coefficient of pressure. So we see that we have an abnormally low coefficient of pressure at this wing junction here. And that might be that it takes a lot more time to resolve the solution. We might need a higher mesh density to resolve a pressure solution. But in this case, we're just going for a basic uh, force solution. So we'll go back to vorticity and we start to see that this is getting to a more converged state. Now, if you want to look at the force description or the convergence state, we can also go to plots. So plots here, we can see the residuals for coefficient of lift, vorticity, uh, induced drag coefficient, moment coefficient. We can see that those are all kind of progressing in a convergent manner. So uh, I'm, I'm semi-confident in the solution up to this point. If we also want to look at the force, we can also go right click on the plots window. We could say plot 4z component. We could say versus y, for instance, for our lifting surfaces. And then we can see the solution here as well. And we see the lift distribution, which is getting converged progressively. This should be a little bit smoother because it's a continuous surface. We also see the horizontal tail, and that is good to see. Now, the only thing else I should mention before we stop is that we can go ahead to this analysis tab. We can click this reference right over here, set it to my center of gravity, and then we can press refresh solver data for analysis. That's gonna give us our force distribution or our force for each body and we can actually export this really easily. We have some other options here that we won't discuss in this video, but here we have XYZ coefficient of force, lift, drag, moments, and then the uh, we have CM roll, CM pitch, and CM yaw display here. And we can export that via export solver data, external post processing solver uh, software, and we can use that as a text file. But that concludes this simplistic description of a solver setup starting from CAD.